beat that ass. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of WWN Proving Ground. I'm, I'm Donnie Harris Jr. joined alongside by Dan Lydon. And Dan, we are starting harder than two rats fighting in, fighting in a wolf sock right about now. Absolutely. What a great way to start off an exciting show. we got a ton of great matches, and we're kicking it off with Damien, Little Hound Dog, taking on one half of the Mad Men at Work in Scyther. It's going to be an exciting, exciting opening contest. The Little Hound Dog, a long walk colliding into the throat of Scyther. One of the Mad Men at Work. Oh, bitches kick to the back of the head. Scyther now laying there in the middle of the ring like dirty laundry. Nobody home with that five-star frog splash. Oh, taking all that damage right on the abdomen. Absolutely, that's why it's a high-risk move. Scyther like very ring aware, knows where he's at at all times. Even if he's in a disadvantageous position, he's able to get out of dodge just in time. Trying to choke the life out of the little hound dog. The little hound dog. One, Damian Gemini, one half of the WWE Proving Ground Tag Team Champions. Won those titles with his dad late last year. Oh, they heard that chop too, County's over. Absolutely. Uh, Scyther is an, an aggressive individual. I, I admire Little Hound Dog for calling Scyther out like this. I, I, I don't know how good of an idea it was, though. Little Hound Dog wanting to make a name for himself. Very proud to hold the tag titles with his dad, but wants to prove to this capacity crowd and those watching at home that he can fight his own battles on himself. Ooh, doing a good job except for that eye rake there. Man can't see, he can't fight. Scyther flying it up with a blow to the back. Scyther letting that crowd distract him. Let him kind of get into his head a little bit. I do not want to see inside the head of a man. Almost got the three count there, only a two. I do not want to see inside the head of a madman like Scyther. Right now, slowing it down, right in the center of the ring. Has that chin lock locked in good and tight. Pulling the neck back, pulling the chin back. And that pain shooting from the head all the way down to the tailbone. Absolutely, absolutely wrenching on Damien's neck, using those forearms of his. And Scyther, an absolute force to be reckoned with the ring, just clubbing Damien in the back. Uh, uh, Scyther, very aggressive, very cool, very much a Fonzarelli here. Scyther gonna try to finish it here right now. Has little hound dog by both legs. Uh -oh. Twisting him in. Uh, looking for a sharpshooter here. Yeah. See if he can He's got a little Damien turned around. Let's see what happens. Right in the middle of the ring, and you can hear the howls of agony from the little hound dog, Damien Gemini. Absolutely. Big hound dog's not here to help him out. He's stuck in the middle of that ring all on his own. And you know, this might, might be just proving to be too much for little dog, but he's making his, he managed to grabbing onto the bottom of the roof. Grabbing the bottom row, has the count of five. Scyther doesn't want to DQ. You know, DQ, you lose the match and you go down the rankings. Laying the boots in now on the little hound dog, Damian Gemini. Scyther trying to keep him from getting up on his feet. Arguing with our official here. I don't know if I agree with that strategy. And you hear the barks. Those coming from the crowd, from this capacity crowd. They want to see Damian Gemini get back up to his feet and put away Scyther. Looks like he's going to give them what they want. Laying in those strikes to the head of Scyther. One, two, three, four, five, I've lost count. Oh, both men colliding there. Scyther getting the worst of it. Little Hound Dog gonna try to fly. Almost going for the tornado, tornado DDT, didn't quite get it. Missing with the Lariat. Didn't miss with that knee though. Scyther down on the ground, hooking the leg. Here's the Little Hound Dog, have the victory, no. Absolute back and forth action between Scyther and Little Damien. Back and forth action between the Hound Dogs and the Mad Men at work. Going on for just weeks and weeks now. These are just two groups that just do not stop going after one another. So it's been a, a long story oh. tag team feud between these individuals. Little Hound Dog colliding there, that top turnbuckle. Ooh, and it collided in a part of anatomy. Ooh, any man can sympathize with that. Absolutely. Scyther now going to try to pick the bones. For that superplex. Right smack dab in the middle of the ring. Damian Gemini laying there about almost unconscious. Rolling around trying to get some feeling back. So they're gonna follow it up. First from the second rope. Connects with the elbow onto the little hound dog. Hooking the leg. And he got it. Decisive, decisive win. A decisive win by Scyther. But Dan, we gotta give props to the little hound dog. 
He came in here with fight and Vinegar frothing at the mouth. He wanted a fight, didn't back down from Sather. I look forward to his next one-on-one -on -one contest. Absolutely. But what's this? The other madman at work making his presence known, the bigger of the two, Chungus. Little Hound Dog all alone, one versus two. It's not bode well for little Damien. His father won half the ta tag team champions with him. He's not here to help. This is not a position little Damien wants to be in with. Wait a minute! The Natural 20, the former WWE Multimedia Champion, coming to the aid of Damien Gemini, Drake Xavier, going all out on Chungus. Damien Gemini and Sather outside the ring. Now, Chungus and Drake Xavier in the middle of the ring, fighting the bigger man head hitting the turnbuckle. Pandemonium here in the training, in the WWE Training Center. Head colliding with two turnbuckles now. Trying to get some, trying to get some order here in the middle of the ring. Chungus hasn't been able to get any offense on at all. I mean, is this a match? Is it, is it, like, I know these two were set to compete. Is, is, are they starting now? The referee's not really stopping it. Is this the following contest? Yes to all the above, I would, I would have imagined. And now Drake Xavier colliding, using all of his weight on the bigger man. You know, on a bigger man, much taller, much stronger, much bigger, you want to keep him on the ropes. You want to keep him on the mat. You don't want him to be able to use that natural height and weight advantage. Absolutely, Drake Xavier. Strong, strong start against, you know, Chungus. You see a guy like Chungus, you, you think a tag team competitor, but Chungus is no stranger to singles bouts. He can hold his own. And Drake Xavier making quick work, going for that pin. Drake Xavier trying to make quick work of, of Chungus, followed up that beautiful drop kick with a pin attempt. Wasn't enough to put the bigger man away. Now the bigger mad man at work back up to his feet, albeit perhaps only momentarily. Wait a minute, reversing the Irish whip. Drake Xavier, missing with the Lariat, bouncing off the other side. Getting caught there in the crossbody. Chungus planting those ribs down on the knee. And throwing Drake Xavier around like dirty laundry. Chungus is showing everybody, reminding them why he is the powerhouse of the Mad Men at work. And Dan, you saw it was nothing but nonstop offense on Chungus, and he absorbed it all, and I don't think he's any worse for wear. Absolutely. Chungus is a weird guy. The longer the match goes, quick cover. The longer the match goes, the more beat up he gets. He just seems to absorb it, store it, and then release it onto his opponents. Like, if you don't score a win over Chungus quick, you don't score it easily, that's for sure. And you don't know what devious patterns his mind works. Likes to use that brute strength and all kind of violent delights, if you will. Violence and delights like right there trying to choke Drake Xavier on the second rope. Referee checking on Drake and making sure he's okay. Man can hardly breathe. I think I know what's coming up. I know what Chungus has got planned. It's sexy Chungus time. Well... I'm sure that there are individuals watching this at home and in the audience that appreciate that. I am not one of them. No, it's starting to grow on me. Big chop from Drake Xavier to the chest of Chungus. See if he's able to mount some, uh, mount some offense here, get back on top of this contest. Two chops now, telling the folks one more. Misses with the third chop. Oh, but Chungus not missing with those big, meaty hand hawks. Hitting Drake Xavier in the titular area, if you will. It is good display of power from Chung. Oh, oh, oh good a fat chub and a chest chub there. But a good display of power from Chungus. I mean, he saw Drake Xavier lighting him up in that corner with chops. Chungus laid him with one and turned the turned the tie back around. Got back on top. It just shows you what a powerhouse Chungus is. Now sitting on top of Drake Xavier's back and just absolutely wrenching his neck back. This is not going to take long if he stays in this position. And it's not like you know he's a similar. If he was so like, if he was a little bit lighter, Drake could scoot, uh, scoot to one of the side of the ring and try to get a rope break. Chungus is what almost 300 pounds. You don't move when that's sitting on top of you. Absolutely.
Absolutely. Chucky doesn't move unless he wants to move. Drake Xavier digging down deep, able to start slowly working his way back up to that vertical base. But don't make a mistake. As big a guy Chungus is, he's quick. He's agile. He'll come off the top rope if he needs to. And I think Drake Xavier's finding out very quick he might have under underscored Chungus here. Didn't underscore with that knee to the face. I think I almost see blood there. Chungus is going to try to finish it. No! Drake Xavier still able to kick out. And now I see a little bit of frustration on Chungus, telling our official three. No, that was two indeed. You know, we were talking about underestimating. I think uh, Chungus underestimating the fighting prowess of the Nat 20. You don't become the WWN Multimedia Champion for nothing. Absolutely right. Telling us, telling us it's sexy Chungus. Double axe handle into the upper back of the Natural 20. Hooking the leg. No! Only a two count once again. This crowd showing their unappreciation for Chungus, shouting, Chungus sucks. Chungus is letting it distract him. Like, he's got to focus on the match. Like you said, Drake Xavier didn't become multimedia champion for no reason. I wouldn't be turning my back on him. Chungus trying to get him back up to his feet. Drake Xavier still has a little bit of fight, trying to get back up to that vertical base, back up to his feet. Oh! And Chungus with just one move sends him crashing back down. Checking his mouth there, see if he's bleeding. Our official checking on Drake Xavier. Drake Xavier about got any life, about got it, but doesn't about have any life left in him. Oh! Ouch. And one word that hunts. Going back to the submission hold once again. And Dan, you've been in you've been in maneuvers like this. You've had the Mexican kill on you. How much pain is Drake in at this moment? Uh, an unfathomable amount. The only thing worse than being in a hold like that modified camel clutch is being in that hold from a guy the size of Chungus. You got his weight coming down on your lower back. Just like that. You got him wrenching on the back of your neck and Drake fighting, fighting effort, trying to work his way out of that hole, but Chungus right back on top and just absolutely stretching that lower back and neck of Drake Xavier. I think by the end of the match, Drake Xavier will have grown an inch. Speaking of inch, well and far away from that bottom rope there to try to break the hold. Referee checking, see if Drake's gonna tap. Might even pass out at this point. Drake trying with everything, getting Herculean strength there and getting back up to his knees. Modified maneuver there, busting the face. Falling it up with a vicious boot to the head. Chungus is staggering. He's down on one knee, back up to his feet, but he's stabbling on quicksand. No way. He's Drake Xavier trying to pick up the much bigger man. I admire the tenacity, Drake. No, he's not getting him. Chungus oh, able to slip out of it. Planting him, planting that back into the knee. And now the pain and agony all over Drake Xavier's face. Chung is going to try to transition to a pin and temp again. N nope, only two. That was close. You know, I hate to say, I, I think if Chung has just hooked the leg after that backbreaker, he would have had Drake. But kudos to Drake Xavier here. I mean, he did, what, he did something just now a lot of guys don't do, and I don't want us to gloss over that. He was able to not just get underneath Chung, get him up on his shoulders. He had him there. Had Chung just not wiggled his way out, I think we would have seen something very impressive from Drake Xavier, just the fact that he was able to get him up in that vertical base on his shoulders like that. Now, this is going back to what I was saying before about Jungus being a bit of a high flyer. Waited too long. Drake Xavier saw his moment, his one opportunity, and he took it. Jungus just a little bit too long climbing to the high rent district. And now Drake Xavier going to try to capitalize. Oh, no. Trying to go, going to try to hoist the bigger man again. That massive weight on the shoulder. Transitioning out of it, Jungus is. Oh, following it up with a boot to the head. Chungus just, that, that top rope belt being the only thing holding Chungus up at this moment. German suplex from the net 20, Drake Savior. Massive German suplex. I was wondering if we're gonna get it. Because we saw three times Drake's attempt to pick Chungus up. He got him off his feet three times in that third. It paid off in spades. But you gotta think, Dan, that massive weight advantage has got to be paying dividends for Chungus because when you are able to pick up a man that big, it hurts all over. And Chungus, as we know, can absorb a lot of damage. Absolutely, just the amount of damage done to Drake Xavier's back the entire match 
and then capping it all off by hitting that German suplex on a guy the size of Chungus. He had to have done some serious damage. Both men exchanging blows there, missing that lariat. Drake off the top, colliding into Chungus, colliding into him again, trying to keep the big man on his back. Third time's a charm. Drop kick into the corner. Tides finally turning for Drake Xavier, finally getting that momentum back he had in the beginning of the match. Throwing all of that body weight into Chungus, dragging him away. Is it enough? Do the Nat 20 have a win? No! Chungus, Chungus still able to kick out. Barely getting that shoulder up. Drake Xavier is beside himself. He can't believe it. The fans are beside themselves. And Chungus is trying to find that second win. Drake Xavier trying to find that third or fourth win. Trying to find a high win there. Bouncing off the top. Misses. Jumping onto those feet. Big boot to the head from Chungus on to Drake Xavier. Picking him up like a rag doll and planting him into the mat. Hammer drill driver, that should be the match. And a decisive, decisive win for one half of the Mad Men at work, Chungus. The Mad Men at work, 2-0 here at WWN Proving Ground. Great efforts from both Drake Xavier and Damian Gemini. But it's Scyther and the madman, the big madman Chunga standing tall here. And Scyther just putting the exclamation point on this. What a disgusting human being. Drake can't defend himself. Just insult to injury here. Wait a minute, what are, what's madman doing here? Goodness have mercy. Come on, Scyther, that's enough. And now Scyther just rubbing it in. He already got the win over Damian Gemini. Isn't that enough? Does he have to rub? Does he just have to rub it in the face of Drake Xavier? Well, Mad Men at work getting the win here at WWN Proving Ground, but making no friends. And now our officials happen to come in and check in on Drake Xavier. Dan, I think he's hurt, and he's hurt bad. Yeah, it's definitely looking that way. Mad Men at work made a statement tonight, and unfortunately, Damian and uh, Drake Xavier, they just seem to be the ones that had to deliver that message for them. I can't read lips. I don't know what, I don't know what Drake was saying, but music stopping here and, oh, Dan, I think he's hurt. He's hurt bad. Our, our, re our officials, our, our, backstage, our backstage people checking on him. Someone asking if they need a stretcher. God, I hate to see this with a guy like Drake Xavier. The guy's such a hard-fought champion. You don't want to see somebody like him just get put out. Checking on him now. Clutching onto the back of his neck there. This crowd showing their support and admiration. Drake. Drake up on one knee now. Officials, refs trying to help him back up to his feet. I'm sure Drake would like to try to leave under his own power. Looks like he's going to be able to do that. And the WWN faithful here at the Proving Ground Training Center, you know, just showing their appreciation for the fighting spirit of the Nat 20 Drake Xavier. Absolutely. You know, it's a risk. It's a risk any competitor runs when they step inside the ring, but you hate to see it each and every time, Dan. It never gets easier to see this. Like, I mean, these guys put their bodies on the line every night, and you, you're fighting that risk versus reward, and sometimes it just comes back and bites you a little bit. Well, I hope that was not the last we saw the Nat 20 Drake Xavier. Hopefully he can go to the back, get some ice on it, see what, if anything, got broke, and get back in the ring very soon. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, the following women's contest is scheduled for one fall. One fall! Introducing first.
Women's action here at WW Improving Ground. Raven Knight going up against JC Black. Raven Knight been wrestling since 2018. And you know, Dan, I spoke with JC earlier. Uh, she's just been wrestling since June of last year. So giving up a lot of experience to Raven Knight. Absolutely. That's uh, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out during this match. Raven Knight, as you said, been around since about 2018. I've seen her in the ring plenty of times. She's an aggressive competitor. Uh, uh, JC Black, like she hopefully is walking to this at least mentally prepared to make up for that lack of experience. Well, you'd think with more experience she wouldn't turn her back on opponent. Schoolboy there, JC Black almost getting her first, almost getting a victory here in Proving Ground very quickly too, I might add. Really should make for an exciting, exciting match. Anxious to see what this young lady has up her sleeve, see what Raven Knight has up her sleeve as well. And you may notice, purchased very conspicuously in the lower left-hand corner there is Lilith. Uh, always accompanies Raven Knight to the ring. Uh, Raven told me that Lilith won a spelling bee recently. Oh, and you're sitting here and you're telling me that there's somebody here who talks to some sort of inanimate object and like insists that it's personified, like a, a Gunther and I don't have any time for that kind of shenanigans. Are we here to call this match, or are you gonna sit here and spat off nonsense? We're just here to call the match. Right now, this match firmly in control of JC Black with that headlock on Raven Knight. Raven Knight taking a moment there, trying to get out of it. Oh, hit to the bread basket there at least once, twice now. Headlock's broken up. Raven now gonna follow it up. Irish whipping her into the ropes. Picking her up, no! Transitioning into a pin attempt. No! Raven Knight transitioning the pin attempt into a pin attempt. Both competitors going a bit tit for tat here. Snapmare from JC Black on the Raven Knight. JC Black gonna need to follow it up with something. I think it's a mistake there letting Raven catch her breath. Going to the other, going to the side, running. Colliding with that leg into Raven Knight. Trying to drag her, try, perhaps trying to drag her back to the center, trying to get a pin attempt. Tremendous feat of strength by JC Knight, able to pull her out of the corner like that in a quick pinfall attempt, able to get that shoulder up after two. Right now, both girls taking a moment, trying to catch their breath. Seems JC Black's still in control here. Wait, grabbing her by the hair, planting her down on the mat. Could be over, no! Raven Knight choking J.C. Black. Oh, and following it up with a blow there to the to the shoulder blade. Was that enough? No, only a one count. Going for that leg, you know. You, 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 oh, come on, now that's just blatantly cheating at this point. I'm getting the impression that Raven Knight's a sadistic individual. Not only does she want to defeat her opponent, she wants to make them hurt. She wants to make them, heck, maybe even bleed. Telling this crowd to shut up, making no friends here. Oh, and just once again, just landing that double X handle into the side and into the stomach of JC Black. This poor girl can't even defend herself, Dan. It definitely a bit of an aggressive streak behind Raven Knight here. JC's finding this one out the hard way, unfortunately, with that neck draped across the bottom rope. Those extra years of experience paying dividend for Raven Knight now. J.C. Black might be in unfamiliar territory at this moment. She might know, not know what to do. Having only wrestled for a few months. Playing her head in that top turnbuckle now. Raven seems to be just taking her time and enjoying it. Face planting her right in the middle. And now just further just smashing her head into the mat. Hooking the leg. No! Raven Knight is absolutely beside herself. The strength, the, the, the gumption, the fight, and J.C. Black I am not giving up this contest. No, J.C. Black not giving up at all. Don't think the, I don't think the young lady has any quit in her vocabulary. Now, speaking of vocabulary, did I mention that Lilith won a spelling bee? Hey, good for Lilith. 
Yeah, you know, maybe her and Gunther could, uh, you know, do, do a one-on-one, -on -one, like, Jeopardy contest or something. Right now, this contest firmly in control of Raven Knight. Picking her up, slamming her down. No! J.C. Black still able to kick out. Fighting, fighting spirit behind J.C. Black, I'll tell you that. Like, not everybody gets up from that spine buster. I've seen it. I've seen it apply to a lot. Speaking of applying, applying the submission hold, I don't even know what you call the call this, Dan, but I know one thing, it's gotta hurt. Yeah, so painful would be a good way to describe this. Wait a minute! But JC Black transitioning it into a pin attempt. No! Raven able to kick out. Boot to the stomach. Code breaker on a Raven Knight! Competitors down on the mat. Let's see who gets up first. Like at this point, this could be anybody's contest. Well, all that damage that was inflicted on the JC Black, you know, paying dividends for Raven. You know, Raven ate that code breaker, but you know, JC was so damaged she couldn't capitalize. Raven back up to her feet. So is JC Black eating a clothesline, running. Good kick there, knocking Raven Knight down once again. Both women pacing, giving each other space. Here she goes, Car Willie, colliding with that elbow into the corner. Beautiful handspring back elbow out of nowhere. That was quite impressive. Setting Raven Knight up in the corner. This could be bad. Double well, knees right to the tummy. Tell me, Dan, how much does that knock out of a competitor? You've had that happen at least once or twice. A couple times. I'll say that usually the bigger your torso, the more wind you're able to carry, the worse it actually is. Cause Hold on here, pin attempt. No, only a one. Very close fall, very near fall in this contest. I mean, it is any but innovative. Innovative leg lock there, trying to squeeze the life out of Raven Knight. Raven able to get out of it. I think, I think she, she bit her. I think she bit the leg of J.C. Black. I'm trying to check the rule book. I believe that's illegal, but I guess the ref didn't catch it. App not, the rule book app not downloading here. It's because I'm because I have AT&T service. Now the sleeper hold locked in, dragging her down to the mat. Legs rock, locked across the body. JC Black could be fading. Referee checking on her. Arm dropped once. No, that's it. That's it. It's over. Here is your winner by submission. A great showing of fighting spirit from J from JC Black, Dan. But it was the experience of Raven Knight that won the night here. And I think her and Lilith are gonna to go to the back and celebrate now. Absolutely, a great, great effort by J.C. Black, unfortunately falling short to, to experience, to strength, to size, to determination. I mean, Raven Knight just absolutely brought it to this match. Well, J.C. Black gonna be able to leave under her own power, under her own will, that's a victory in and of itself. I'm sure we'll see her once again here at WWN Proving Ground. Do you see what I did there? WWN. Let me introduce myself. I'm Raven Knight, the Gothic Goddess, and your Goth Mommy. Did you see what I did there? I won, like I said I was gonna do. I destroyed, I made that little girl cry. And that's gonna happen every single week that I show up to Proving Ground till I get to the top of the ladder where I have that championship. Because I am not coming here to make any friends. I'm coming here to claim my kingdom. I feel like I did such a good job. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one fall.
Rich Portayala going one-on-one -on -one against the man they call Frick. And Dan, conspicuous two things with Rich Portayala doesn't have the WWE Improving Ground Championship over his shoulder, and the set is nowhere to be seen. It's a bit of an unusual look for uh, Rich Port. Usually, you know, you see one member of the set, you see them all, or at least a good handful of them. You know, Rich, you, you, you got the hardware. And, and look at this, right off the bat, right off the bat, a very, very aggressive tie-up. Rich Port Ayala, a... A, a pedigree, a true thoroughbred in the professional wrestling rank. Steve Frick, sum it up, a street brawler, a fighter. Doesn't have the most finesse, but he gets the job done. Absolutely. Guys, what he lacks in maybe technical showmanship in the ring, he definitely more than makes up in spades for just outright aggression and just brawly know-how. Of course, I've been hearing the set. Uh, Cracks have been showing in their foundation, if you will. Oh, a show of disrespect from Rich Portiala. Oh, and a show of aggression from Frick on a Ridgeport. And another show of aggression. Blocking that shot and uh, going with another shot once again. Rich reversing that Irish rip into the side. But Frick colliding with the taller man and the taller man down on the mat. Frick is just a house of fire, just getting Richport rocking and reeling very early into this contest. And then Richport, again, championship mindset right there. Saw Frick coming, able to slide out under that bottom rope, get out of harm's way. Very, very smart move from Richport. Very, very smart move. Has move has till the count of 10 to get back in there. Ref uh, trying to get Frick to step back there and give Richport a moment to get back in. As I said, has till the count of 10. Frick's going to allow it, it would ima I would imagine. Wait, no, no, no. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, hard to figure out what goes through the mind of Frick. Rich Portiala going to get back in now, I think. Still, still standing on the outside. One leg in. Nope, nope. He was only testing the waters. Back in now, ready to swim and hiding behind the referee. Oh, come on. Again, he's just getting distance between himself and Frick. He's able at this point to get more of a win between... Oh, shoving the ref. Oh! Dirty move from Rich Portayala. You know what? I like it. It got him the upper hand. He took an extra minute, got his win, and the first chance he had, he took control of the match. That's why Rich Port has got that championship mindset. Has that championship mindset, but also has a disrespecting mindset to our fans here at WWE Improving Ground. These crowd, this crowd chanting to frick him up. Right now, the only one that's getting fricked is Frick. Now on the middle rope, and there you see another blatant display of disrespect. Rich Portiola just sitting on the head of Frick. Referee trying to get him, getting him away from him. Oh! Frick still has some fight left in him. Hit him there to the side. Eating a strike from Richport. Going to try to end this match here, holding down the arm. No! I see Frick holding onto that arm now. I think some damage was done, or at least done to the shoulder area. Absolutely, definitely favoring it already early in this match, shaking it off, trying to just get some more feeling back into it. Maybe it's a little hard to tell. Bridgeport definitely wants a victory here. Wants to climb the race, wants to get a shot at that Proving Ground Championship again. Eating a eating a boot now into the corner, Frick is. Richport once again, Dan playing very, very loose with the rules. Absolutely, and you know, part of me, I, I just have to believe Richport's wanting to make an example of Stephen Frick. You know, it wasn't too long ago where Frick was chasing the WWN Proving Grand Heavyweight title, and I think IA he still holds a bit of an exception to that. He still remembers Frick trying to take away something that he felt was his. It was his for a long time. Now rests over the shoulder of insane John Strange. That title gonna be defended in the main event later on tonight. And right now, if either of these men wanna get a title shot, they're gonna to have to get a victory here. And I think that might be Richport now. Frick almost had his mercy eating those elbows. Wait a minute, no. Frick fighting back with not one but two elbows of his own, two strikes of his own. Richport putting a stop to it. And now just laying that strike into the back and you hear Frick screaming all over the building here. That hurt. That, didn't, that, that, that right there didn't hurt. That was just more out of principle. Just a straight slap to the face of Stephen Frick. 
follow-up by the club to the back. That, that one probably hurt. Rich Portiala believes in his technique, believes in his prowess, very confident. Throwing Frick into the corner now. Eating a boot for his trouble. How do you like the taste of leather? Wait a minute, no. Using the momentum of Frick to transition to a sidewalk slam. Only getting a two count though. Richport beside himself, very, very unhappy with the uh, work of the senior referee right now, not liking his count. Telling the referee he needs to count faster. I think our ref counts just fine. Now telling our crowd to shut up. Not enduring himself to our fans here, Dan. You know, Richport, you know, he, when he comes into the ring, he expects a certain level of professionalism, both from himself, from his opponent, from the referee and from the fans at the end of the day. If he feels like people are just going around acting uncouth, he's gonna call them out on it. Right now, he's being very uncouth, the Frick, just telling the fans, come on. I, your booze mean nothing, I see what makes you cheer. Laying in a strike on Frick, who hasn't been able to mount any offense here. Asking him how he liked it. Frick eating another one. Wait a minute, catches him, turning him around. Frick bouncing off the ropes, but missing. Was not fast enough. Richport had him scouted. And I just, I just don't think it's good strategy to chit chat with the fans when you've got a man, when you got a down opponent behind you down. I, I, I usually would tend to agree with that. Part of me just has to think this is partially just Richport, more so just acting out of frustration. Like he's in there with Stephen Frick. He's having a hard fought match. But part of me has to believe he doesn't want Frick. He wants John Strange, Frick's tag team partner, because he's running around with the WWM Proving Ground title. And I, I have to imagine Richport frustrated. Oh! Frick mounting a comeback. Still some life left. Absolutely. And John Strange's tag team partner, once again checking on that shoulder, though. This crowd, this crowd clapping, this crowd chanting, and those cheers can make a competitor do things that he didn't think he was able. They get the blood flowing, they get the adrenaline going. Absolutely, we got Richport working his way up to his feet. We got Stephen Frick not far behind. It's just a neck and neck race to see who gets to that vertical base. But like I was saying, I don't think Richport even wants to be in the ring with Stephen Frick. I think his main goal is to get his hands back on John Strange and he just, doing what he has to do in this contest just to get to John Strange at this point. Well, Frick now back up to his feet, back up to a vertical base. Laying in the lariat under Rich Portayala. Laying in an elbow now. Steve Frick, this madman is going. Reverse Irish whip into the ropes. But Frick with a flying clothesline on a Rich Portayala. Hooking the leg, is it enough? No! Richport keeping those dreams of challenging John Strange for that Proving Ground Championship are still alive. But first, he's gonna have to get past this man and Frick is not wanting to oblige. He is not wanting to move. And also, you know, I wonder if Seth, you know, the set, they're not here. Normally they would insert themselves at this point and try to help out Richport. I don't know if Richport's used to doing it all on his own. That's a fair point. As much of a, a fighter as Richport is, you're right. Usually at this late into a contest, you have one member of the set, you got them all, and so far they all seem to be MIA. Vicious maneuver on a Richport Arroyo. Royal. Executed perfectly was a pin attempt. No. Stephen Frick incensed. He's getting getting to his vertical base. Richport, opposite end of the ring, slowly getting to his vertical base. Looking out to the crowd, you know. It, 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 it's interesting to see this side of Richport IA only because, you know, last week, you know, he had a title shot. He sent the set back. I don't know if that was the right move. I don't know if that was smart because now I don't see the set at all. He seems like he's in a position where he could probably have him in his corner. I don't know what the deal is with the, the, them as a group collectively. They're gone, they're not here. Richport's on his own. He might be regretting that decision at this point. 
All we can do is speculate at this moment. Well, what we can't speculate is, oh, colliding with the head of Steve Frick. You know, we say Rich Portiala, he's used to having the set in his corner, but he's very doing very good right now, finding his own battles, going for a pin attempt. No! Frick once again able to get the shoulder up. I, I, I hate to say it, maybe if that official was you know, just a little bit closer, was able to swoop around a little bit faster. I, I, I hate to say, I think Richport might have just picked up the win if it wasn't for that official. I, it, was, it was so close. Well, this crowd chanting, frick, frick, frick. We know who's camped there in. Richport Ayala, the first one back, first one back to his, well, his knees there, if you will. Back up to his feet. Frick now back up to his feet. Scooping him up. Frick fighting his way out. Big elbows to the back. Richport's head. Richport catches him and plants him down in the mat. No! Once again, Steve Frick, the fighting spirit of Steve Frick, is able to kick out of the best that Rich Portiala can dish out at him. And Rich Port's just laying there on the mat beside himself, holding his head, catching his breath, trying to figure out what's it gonna take. What does he have to do to pick up the win here tonight? Dan, I can't read minds, but at this point, I think the thought going through Rich Port's head is, man, I wish I had a little backup. I think that's a fair point. Steve Frick, on the other hand, not used to backup, used to fighting his own battles, used to winning his own battles, I might add. Has quite a few victories here at WWE Improving Ground, trying to get a victory here over Richport. Richport not gonna let that happen anytime soon, it would appear. Scooping him up. Saying it's my time. Frick able to weasel out. Missing with the Lariat, bouncing off the ropes. Colliding into Richport Ayala. Hooking both legs now. And he got him. Well, Rich Portiala came out all on his own. The set was not in sight. Perhaps they could have been the deciding factor, but it was one-on-one, -on -one, and Steve Frick then proved that he was the better man here tonight. Absolutely, and like you said, maybe if the whole set was out, you know, maybe if they worked a little bit more cohesively as a unit, I don't know what their mindset is right now, but there seems to be a bit of an issue. Not here ringside for Ridgeport IAM. Maybe that was his decision still. Maybe that's them. But either way, Stephen Frick able to pick up a big, big victory here tonight. Both men very well spent. Frick on his feet, but barely. Ridgeport clutching at his side there. Both men now staring at each other. The match is over, but the animosity, I imagine, might... Wait a minute, no! Frick uh, extending his hand in good sportsmanship. Guess he's wanting to put whatever animosity the two have behind him down. Big sign of respect from Stephen Frick. Let's see if Rich Port returns the favor. This crowd wanting to see it. Rich Port seems to be contemplating it. Well, he's gonna leave Frick hanging, but, you know, didn't try to attack him or anything, just walking away. Uh, and you know. Frick can take that as a small victory. I mean, how often have we seen the old, hey, it's okay, but shake my hand will be good, only for it to backfire. So, all things said, Frick picked up a win, walking away from the handshake relatively unscathed, I think tonight, it's a good example of good fight, good night for Stephen Frick. But the question still remains, Dan, what is going on with the set? You know, a few members of them have matches later on the night, including De La Vega challenging insane John Strange for the Proving Ground Championship. That match coming up later. Absolutely. Be interested to see who comes out with who for the rest of the set.
off. Riley Daniels is going to go on with one third of the Sons of Battle, the K9 Alpha T. And you know, Dan, he tells me that he wears the headband to keep all the hair out of his eyes. All right, we'll go with that. Riley Daniels, the heartthrob himself, it's a, a bit of a Casanova, if you will. Definitely got the chip stacked against him here. Not only does he have to take on Alpha T, but look who's ringside. The Sons of Battle. We got all three members ringside. These are three very large, very beefy boys. Riley Daniels got the chips kind of stacked against him here. Well, we're going to see how he can do in this. Basically, this almost one on three has to has to fight a two front war. Alpha T wanting a show of strength here. Heartthrob deciding, trying to figure it out. Not sure if he wants to test the strength here. Alpha T saying, I want it. Nope, nope, nope. Needs to, needs to limber up a little bit. Needs to get everything loose. I think he's telling Alpha T, we'll do it on my time. You know, you gotta be nice and stretched before you do something like that, I think, Dan. Absolutely. Here we go. Nope, nope. Riley nope. Dana's playing a smart game. You know, you got Alpha T, he's trying to set his pace for this match. He's trying to win this match any way he can. He knows if he sets the pace in his favor, he's got a better advantage. Riley Daniels, he's not falling for that trap. He's trying to control the rhythm of this contest. Well, he's got Nick Quinones and Clutch on the outside. He better be watching his feet right now. Oh, and you just see the strength of Alpha T pushing near, to the, near across the other side of the ring. Once again, just pushing him, what, four or five feet back. Now firmly in the clutches, Alpha T. Alpha T throwing him around like dirty laundry. And I think that took, I think that took a little bit out of him. Then again, I think Heartthrob's just in shock. He, don't, I don't think he expected that kind of strength from Alpha T. Absolutely, Alpha T is, a, you know, he, he's a powerhouse. Every member of the Sons of Breakfast, uh, Sons of Battle, in their own right, is a powerhouse. They're all very pen attempt. No, only a two count. Very large, very domineering men. And I'm sorry, Alpha T with that lackluster cover. I, I mean, he's got his weight across Riley Daniels' chest. If he just hooked the leg, I think that would have been it. Now hanging, perching him up high, laying those blows in on the back, getting a nod of approval there from Nick Quinones, the king of battle, one of his troops here right now. Once again, just throwing him down on his side, on his backside. That pain just got to shoot all up and down your leg, up and down the side of your arms. Dan, you've been tossed around once or twice like that. How bad does it feel? How much does it take out of you? I mean, not like that, but I've definitely been thrown around once or twice. And yeah, bad flight, really bad landing for Riley Daniels. I don't know how much offense he's going to get in at this point. Like He's getting banged up pretty early in this contest. Trying to get a little offense in on the head of of Alpha T, but Alpha T just catching him and scooping him up, slamming him down. Alpha T hardly, hardly taking any damage so far in this match. What worked once will work again. Heartthrob just, I think, in for a tougher night than he thought he'd signed up for. Can hardly move at this point. Alpha T just almost playing with his food at this point. Scooping him up. Gonna try to finish it here. No, waited too long and Heartthrob able to slide out. Gonna try to build up some speed, bouncing off the ropes. Colliding into Alpha T, but Alpha T not really moving all that much. Alpha T once again, not really moving all that much. Oh, well that boot to the head certainly staggered him. Gonna need to do more though, missing with the Lariat. Alpha T colliding under the Heartthrob. A roar of triumph showing his dominance here to this capacity crowd as well as his partners Nick Hionis and Bryson Clutch. That should have been the exclamation point right there. The K9 Alpha T. No, not done yet, I think. Taking the straps down. Wants to give one more show of display of the strength for this capacity crowd down. Absolutely, Riley starting to stir, slowly getting his way up to his feet. Trying to get his legs underneath of him. I think he'd be doing himself more favors if he just stay down. Wait a minute, schoolboy onto Alpha T, and he got him! He got him! Dan, uh, I, I kind of had... I had Alpha T pegged to get the victory, but I guess Alpha T took a little too long. The heartthrob saw his moment and he took it. And now gonna put some distance between him and the Sons of Battle. Nick Quinones arguing with Alpha T, telling him that he had it, waited too long. 
Nick Quinones cannot be happy with Alpha T at this moment. Quinones, Alpha T, Bison Clutch, all three members of the Sons of Battle seem absolutely besides himself at this loss here tonight. I cannot, um, you know, I think when they get to the back, Nick Quinones and Bison Clutch are gonna tell Alpha T what a wonderful human being he is. Oh, uh, well, we can only hope. He is in for one heck of an ear shot. Rafael Delgado representing the set, taking on Danny Stratos here. And you know, Dan, it's like we saw earlier, Delgado all by himself, no other members of the set in sight. I know, a very unusual night for the members of the set. Not often you see one of them come out for a singles match by themselves, let alone multiple members. And Rafael Delgado starting off with the disrespect real quick, just face palming Danny Stratos. Danny Stratos. back and forth. A little bit of display of strength there from Delgado. Stratos giving it right back. Stratos, not a man that you want to disrespect. Former MMA fighter, 13 and three. His MMA repertoire on display right there with those kicks onto the left leg of Delgado. If a man can't stand, he can't fight. Absolutely, Stratos, absolutely tough as nails. Oh, bit of a catch as can wrestler, you know. Be interesting to see how he goes up against Delgado, which is very much a more brawlic style fight. Telling Stratos to get up. Oh, Stratos making, making Delgado take a knee there, concentrating on that left leg, concentrating on the face now. Stratos hooking the leg, gonna try to get a win here, no. Stratos, not a man that you wanna underestimate, a former flyweight in Bellator, as I said, 13 and three MMA record. And once again, very smart, concentrating on the left leg of Delgado. When you have a bigger man, you want to try to get him down on the mat where that height is neutralized. Absolutely, just some absolutely stiff shots to the leg from Stratos. Now he's working on picking up the big man. Let's see what happens. Big man able to pick up Stratos, who's given up probably about 50 pounds or so. Oh, that extra pound of Delgado finding himself on the chest of Stratos, almost getting the pin attempt. Delgado gonna slow it down. Oh, stepping on the toe. Once again, kicking the ankle, kicking the leg. And Delgado was down once again, clutching at the back of the knee there. Stratos with a knee of his own onto the leg of Delgado. And now the submission know-how of Danny Stratos on firm display here for us, Dan. Absolutely, just going to town on Delgado's leg. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, a smart strategy on the part of Stratos. You know, you can work around certain injuries. You hurt your arm, you got the other arm. You hurt your back, all right, that's not the best situation. You hurt your leg, that incapacitates you so much because you gotta be able to pick your opponent up to slam him down. You're down to one leg, oh! Never mind picking your guy up. If you're down to one leg, never mind picking a guy up. 
Just standing is going to be an issue the longer this contest goes on. Standing certainly an issue for Delgado here. Oh, Stratus going with the strategy that worked and just once again working on that left leg of Delgado. Not done with it yet. Oh, up and over, almost making that leg point magnetic north. Absolutely. Shades of Mr. Perfect there from Stratos, slowly pulling the big man up to his feet and getting some shots fired into his ribs for his favor. Delgado putting a clothesline on a Stratos, but he can't ignore the pain in that left leg. It could pay dividends for Stratos if this match continues much longer. Delgado needs to finish up. Missing with that leg drop and all that weight of Delgado using against him, crashing down on that mat with no body of Danny Stratus to cushion the fall. Absolutely, Stratus able to get back up. The running lariat of his own going for a quick cover. One and a two. No! Well, if nothing else you can say about Delgado, he might not be as refined as Stratus, but he can take a lot of punishment and he can give it back twice as hard. He can absolutely give it, but I'm wondering how much more gas he's got left in the tank. Every time that pinfall attempt happened. Had, had Stratos st scouted there. Stratos eating an elbow, but you see him clutching onto the leg. Oh, once again colliding with the left leg. And Delgado back down on his knees, but the damage was done to the stomach area, the breadbasket of Stratos. He's clutching on the head. He's feeling pain too. Absolutely. He's got to see if Delgado can capitalize again. He's having trouble maintaining that vertical base. Stratos picking that leg. And it sends him really right to the mat. Has the ankle lock, locked in good and tight. Right in the middle of the ring. Delgado nowhere near a rope break. Twisting it as I said. And it's tapping. And Danny Stratos. That MMA training paying dividends. Big win. John Stam uh, Danny Stratos. Big win. Up a victory over Rafael Delgado. Big win indeed. And now, Dan, I've been keeping score. The set is 0-2 here tonight at WWN Proving Ground. It does not bode well for the future of the set. right now is it just me or is every time bison clutch comes to the ring he looks more and more jack the guy is an absolute monster a monster indeed been training in martial arts since he was eight years old undefeated in combat sports i might add well call him an egg because the guy is absolutely yoked you come up with that one all by yourself i did and i'm 
absolutely proud of that. But seriously, Bison Clutch taking a spot on the corner and is going to let off uh, the leader of the Sons of Battle start this contest. Nick Quinones, a, a general that leads from the front, now going on with Uni Vice. Uni Vice, a party man. He always has a smile on his face. I don't know if that's a smile on his face or if that's just him grimacing because his shirt's three sizes too small. But either way, he looks really good tonight, too. Doesn't look so good in that corner there. Nick Quinones giving a show of disrespect. And you see the strength and power there in the corner of Bites and Violence. The brute, Ray Elliott, just cheering on his partner there. Reverse Irish whip into the corner, or into the, into the ropes. Big flash. And Vice. Uni Vice colliding into Nick Quinones with that shoulder. Nick Quinones beating a hasty, a strategic advance towards the rear, if you will. Absolutely. You got Vice and Clutch on the outside. You got uh, uh, Alpha T just sitting there trying to regroup their man, trying to get him back in the game, trying to get his head into this contest. And as I hate to say it, I think Uni kind of getting into his head a little bit. And now the strength, the violence of Bison Violence, the brute Ray Elliott is here in the ring, standing at attention for the King of Battle. Nick Quinones um, doesn't know what to make of it there. You, I wouldn't think, uh, you know, the brute Ray Elliott to be to have a refined military etiquette like that. Well, here we go. Both men, both men face to face. A show from Ray Elliott. Collar and elbow tie up now. The strength of Ray Elliott winning out. No. Being transitioned into the corner there by Nick Quinones. And a shove, I shove now from the King of Battle. Oh, eating the blows from the bigger man. Throwing Nick Quinones into the corner and throwing all of that body weight. He's got to have at least 30 or 40 pounds on Nick Quinones. Oh, at least. And a big, big side belly to belly suplex going for that cover. No. Quinones able to get that shoulder up. A certainly great display of grit. That is, that is made of Nick Quinones, but Ray Elliott has plenty more where that comes from. Tagging back in Uni Vice now. Uni Vice getting in some offense of his own, a little bit more unique. And you see his partner just throwing him into, and throwing him into there. Now Ray Elliott throwing him into him. And now a clothesline from Uni Vice. Was it enough? No. Interesting teamwork on the part of uh, Vice and Violence. Some innovative offense, but you know what? They're coming out, you know, no worse for the wear from it. You got the Sons of Battle rocking and reeling on the defense right now. Impressive showing from Vice and Violence. Nick Quinone is stopping those move attempts. Now in control. Russian leg sweep on a Uni Vice. Nick Quinone. Is he going to tag in Bison Clutch? No, he's going to go for the submission. And he's going to tag in Bison Clutch. Bison Clutch, the power of the Sons of Battle. Now stomping a boot on the on the Uni Vice. I think he knocked some of the color out of that shirt. And you said it yourself, the power of the Sons in battle. When you got three guys as big as them and one of them is the power, it really illustrates just how big and just how dominant uh, this guy is. I mean, he's just an absolute monster in there. Right now, the power of Vice and Violence, Ray Elliott, neutralized on the outside, hasn't been tagged in yet. I think he wants to test his strength on Bison Clutch. Bison Clutch asking for silence. Slapping the bare chest of Uni Vice. What worked once may work again. And it does indeed. I think the next color we're gonna see on that shirt is red. Tossing him right to the center of the ring, hooking the leg, I think that's it. No. Oh, I don't know if this is the best moment to get in some push-ups here, Dan. Well, he just needs to make sure Uni knows between the two of them who the bigger guy really is. It's just mind games. He's gonna have that match won, absolutely. But you know what, Bison, he's just having fun. Uni Vice not having any fun. Nick Quinones aiming high and delivers the elbow on a Uni Vice. Impressive move on the part of Sons of Hooking Battle. The leg. I hate to no. say it. I think the Mad Men at work do it a little bit better, a little bit more effectively. But it was interesting to see another team try to pull that out and make it part of their repertoire. Well, all these teams are scouting each other, writing down the moves of each other, learning each other's strategy. Those tag team titles at WWE Improving Ground currently held by the Puerto Rican Hound Dogs. 
And you got to think, a win here moves you up the ranks, and you could be challenging them for them very soon. And both the Sons of Battles and Vice and Violence want to get that shot. That's a fair point. It's a fair point, but as much as Vice and Violence might want it, Uni's not exactly enough. Eh, how do I say this? He's not exactly showing a whole lot of fighting spirit at this point. At this point, at the mercy, Nick Quinones has the submission locked in, had the pin locked in. Univice very far and away from his partner, Ray Elliott. Ray Elliott wants that tag, wants to get in there, wants to mix it up again. Nick Quinones not going to let that happen. Very strategically positioning himself between Univice and Ray Elliott. Excellent. Ray Elliott very deep in enemy territory. Absolutely. Very excellent ring positioning and you know, awareness of where they are at all points. But the sun of battle, keeping their opponent as far separated as humanly possible. And you just see on instinct, you know, Vice reaching out for his partner. He doesn't have the wherewithal to judge the distance at this point. At least he knows how to count to three and knows how to kick out before the, before the hand hits the mat for the third time. Absolutely, bit of a desperate kick out on the part of Uni Vice. Not showing a whole, whole lot of gas left in this tank. And now he's got Bison back in. A big man, a strong man, a fresh man. And this does not bode well for Uni. There you saw another great display of the tandem, of the synchronicity of the Sons of Battle. Almost got the pin there, but still some fight left oh. in Vice. And a show of disrespect from Vice and Clutch on the Ray Elliott. Referee gonna keep Ray Elliott, Ray Elliott from getting into the ring. Elliott not doing his guy any favors, getting the ref tied up like that. I get his emotions running hot. He wants to go in there and help his boy, but he's causing more harm than good. Definitely that. Right now, Bison Clutch causing plenty of harm on the Uni Vice. Has to the count of five to break it up. And those legs of Uni Vice are noodles at this point. And now the ref doesn't see what Nick Quinones is doing there in the corner. Bison doing a very good job. Oh, wait a minute. Bison Ray Clutch Elliott. doesn't see Ray Elliott, but the ref sure did. Tell him, uh-uh, get back to your corner, my man. Wait a minute. Uni Vice, I don't know where he's getting from, but he's mounting a little bit of offense once again. Bison Clutch up against the ropes. Reverse Irish whipping him into the other side, catching him and slamming him down. Kudos to Uni for fighting back and you know being able to make a bit of an offense, but to me that just seems silly. He was a vertical base, he was fighting back. He had all the opportunity in the world. He could have gone in and just tagged out the Ray the Brute Elliott. But instead, he was trying to get his come up and he wanted to you know, go tit for tat with Bison Clutch and it did not pay out the way he was hoping. Well, that pen attempt not paying out the way Nick Quinones was hoping. Now transitioning to the submission hold once again. Some sort of rear modified choke on the part of the, the king of battle. He's Ma pressing all of his weight down on Uni Vice. Uni Vice back up to one knee now. Back up to his feet. Laying the elbows into the bread basket. Bouncing off the ropes. Oh! Oh, caught him at the leg there. Has the has somewhat of an ankle lock locked in there. Uni, Uni trying to reach for Ray Elliott. Ray Elliott has his hand extended as far as he can. They somehow need to close the gap. Scooping him up. Attempted back suplex. I don't know if Uni was able to work his way out or if that was a modified version on the part of the King of Battle, but either way, Uni is down and your King of Battle here, he is just scaling the turnbuckles. Well, he missed. Nobody home. Ray Elliott had a, or excuse me, Uni Vice had enough know with it all to roll out of the way. Absolutely. That's a big, big man coming down from the Senton. He was. No, very well scouted, and there is. Wait a minute! The in. Brute Ray Elliott! The Brute Ray Elliott is tagged in! The Brute Ray Elliott, the, fr the fresher man, going to work now on Bison Clutch! Bison Clutch, I don't think, is the strongest man in the ring. Now he's not even in the ring! The King of Battle, all by himself! Spine buster on the Nick and Yoda, hooking the leg! No! Oh, you got all four men in the ring. You got Alpha T coming up on that buckle, thinking better of it. Stepping down, he realizes his matches are thrown out. He doesn't want to cost his teammate a victory. Uni 
Levi's planting bison clutch down in the mat. Ray Elliott, the legal man. Talking with Uni. Oh, Uni eating a drop kick from Nick Quinones. Nick Quinones now all along with the brute Ray Elliott. Picking him up. And now Alpha T inserting himself and distracting the ref. And Nick Quinones able to counter that move attempt. Now he's on top of the brute. Has the pin attempt, but Alpha T still arguing with the ref. Ref can't make the count for Nick. Now Alpha T arguing with arguing with Nick Quinones. They're a little mad at each other since Alpha T lost the match early, lost his match earlier. Brute Ray, Brute Ray Elliott back up to his feet. And now Nick Quinones all alone. Vicious display of power. Wasn't enough. Yes. Bison violence with the victory over the Sons of Battle. Well, Dan, it was a hard-fought battle from both teams, but it is Uni Vice and Ray Elliott. Bison Violence picking up the victory here at WW Improving Ground, and they will be moving up the ranks and maybe challenging for those tag titles down the line. Yeah, you never know. They might get their shot, but we got all three members of the Sons of Battle in the ring, and not one of them is in a good mood. Dissension in the ranks. Nick is, Nick is angry at Bison, is angry at Alpha T. Alpha T is angry at Nick. Bison's just. Hey, get the out of here. Go. Go. Nick and Jonas telling him to get out. Can't be happy with the outcome here. The Sons of Battle 0 and 2 here at WWN Proving Ground. Bison and Alpha T leaving Nick and Jonas in there all by himself. Cannot be happy with cannot be happy with their display here at WW Improving Ground. They're gonna to have to go to the back and well come up with a new battle plan.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is main event time here at WWM Proving Ground, and it is that belt right there in the hands of the referee that it is all about. The WWN Proving Ground Championship used to be in the ranks of the set, used to be over the shoulder of Rich Portiala. Right now, in the insane hands of John Strange, De La Vega already getting things off with a shoving match. Don't think you want to do that with a man as crazy as John Strange. Absolutely, and if you want to talk about conflicting styles, contrasting styles, you got, you know, Rico Suave himself, Mr. De La Vega. You know, he's cool, he's smooth. He's a very good technical wrestler. Then you got a guy like John Strange, you know, no, not knocking the man, but the guy's a bit off, you know. Uh, he hails from the asylum. Does he run it? Is he a patient? Because he's got the scrubs, but then he's also got the gowns. Maybe the patients are running the asylum. Maybe, What's his deal? Maybe he's out on work release. Right now, you know, any damage to the head there of John Chase, I don't think it'll be noticeable. I, I think that's a fair statement. It's a little known fact to wrestling. Samoans and John Strange, you just don't touch their heads. Right now, you do bash the head of De La Vega. De La Vega eating several turnbuckles there. And an exploder suplex from John Strange on the De La Vega, just tossing the smaller man near across the ring, eating a clothesline too. And you know, the set, oh, eating a boot now. The set winless here at tonight, but all that would be made mute if De La Vega can win the title here. You're absolutely right. Yet another set match. Just the one competitor. You don't have other members of the set on the outside, but you know, with all this back and forth with the set, you know, be it there, you know, maybe it's a little dissension, whatever. I have to imagine if De La Vega picked up the win tonight and took home that belt, like that might just smooth things over for the set as a whole. Mary, well indeed, but he has to get past that crazy man right there, oh. John Strange. Oh, that hit him in a spot. Absolutely. A very interesting bit of offense from John Strange. Not often you see a guy his size attempt a handspring back elbow into the ropes. And maybe that's why right there, because De La Vega had it very well scouted. De La Vega used to doing moves like that, so he knows perfectly how to counter them. Right now, the bigger man on the mat, neutralizing the height advantage. Oh, stomping on the digits now. De La Vega, a well-fined Lucha Libre style competitor. Now the, his boot finding the head of John Strange once again. I don't know how much damage that'll actually do. For what it's worth, Strange seems to be reeling a good bit early into this contest. Vega, oh. Vega with a headbutt, hurt himself almost as much as he did Strange. Now Strange on that middle rope. Trying to choke the life out of him, has to the count of five. De La Vega not above fighting dirty to get the job done. No one in the set is really. Right on Cowboy onto John Strange. I don't care what your mentality, you'll feel that. John Strange able to kick out at two. John Strange here re reaching out, wanting the crowd, wanting the crowd to chant for him. I think he lives off their cheers and adulation. Right now, De La Vega only lives for one thing and that is to hold the Proving Ground Championship. Wants to bring it back into the ring, ranks of the set. John Strange not gonna let that happen on his watch though. Vicious slaps now from John Strange and a chop from John Strange on a De La Vega. De La Vega being thrown into the corner and all of the weight of John Strange colliding onto him. Getting out of the way there. Wait a minute. Neck breaker onto John Strange. 
And Dan, you've had one or two neck breakers done to you. How do you recover? Uh, you yeah. hope it just stops. <laughs> you just hope it stops at some point. You just, you just regroup, you fight a break to get a bit of a breather and hope you can mount some good offense. And John Strange, you know, he's no kidding there. He has that heavyweight title around his waist for a reason. Very brawlic, very aggressive, very dangerous guy in the ring. But, you know, De La Vega, you know, he's no slouch either. He's in full control of this match. He's not fighting fancy. He's fighting smart, and he's just wrenching, working over that throat of John Strange. De La Vega giving a little bit of a height advantage to John Strange. But De La Vega's used to fighting men that are bigger than him, that are taller than him. He knows what it takes to neutralize someone like John Strange. Case in point right here in the ring right now. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. John Strange coming back there. Strikes there to the six pack of De La Vega. Throwing him into the corner. Eating both feet from De La Vega. John Strange staggering around. Eating a drop kick once again. The champion. Pin attempt now from De La Vega. No. The heavyweight championship, the proving ground championship, not in the ranks of the set just yet. Has the sleeper hold locked in good and tight. Trying to keep John Strange right there in the middle of the green ring off his feet. Brad slowly getting behind John Strange here. They don't want to see the match ending like this. John Strange up on one knee, but he might be fading. Up on both feet, they're a little bit wobbly. Oh, crashing the back of De La Vega into the corner. That hurt him. Those arms draped over the top ropes about the only thing holding him up. Another drop kick, I spoke too soon. De La Vega able to mount another offense onto John Strange. Closing the gap. Gonna hook the leg. No! John Strange able to get that shoulder up, but just, and the longer this match is going, you know, the way De La Vega is just being an absolute animal, just absolutely riding John Strange. This match goes on much longer. I think we might see the gold change hands here tonight. Very well could. De La Vega taking a moment to talk to the crowd. Should be concentrating on John Strange. Doesn't want to give him a moment to recover. John Strange back up to his feet, albeit of a moment. No, nobody home there for De La Vega. De La Vega eating a clothesline from John Strange. Strange able to get back to a vertical base on his own. Starts mounting in a whole other set of offense here. Just colliding again again into De La Vega. De La Vega missing. John Strange, just the strength of John Strange on display there. This crowd chanting for the body slam, and I think John Strange is going to oblige them. Yeah, he's calling for it. He's waiting on De La Vega to find that vertical base. Might be waiting too long. This might be a mistake. No. Yes. Eats the knees from De La Vega. Was it enough to become champion? No, it was not. De La Vega beside himself. You know, you would, he, obviously he's feeling he should have had this match won by now. You know, strange, maybe, maybe it's a case of him being too crazy for his own good. Could very well be. Not giving up yet in this contest. He's got that belt around his waist metaphorically. He doesn't want to be losing it just yet. De La Vega though, coming up with more offense. Up and over. Into the pin. No. Great momentum. Great moves from De La Vega, but it wasn't enough to put John Strange away. And you know, Dan, you've been in matches where this deep, where you've thrown everything at the champion and it wasn't enough. Do you start getting disheartened at this point in time or does De La Vega, what does De La Vega do at this point? At this point, I can't speak for De La Vega. You know, me personally, you know, all you can do is just keep fighting. Hope for the best. It's a pinfall. One, two. No! Able to get their shoulder up after that power bomb. From, from, from John Strange, I'm just beside myself at this point. But De La Vega has to be frustrated, has to be beside himself. You know, he, he, he's trying to do whatever he can to take that belt home with him. And Strange, again, maybe it's just he's too crazy for his own good, but he's very, not giving up. Very well could be too, very well could be too crazy for his own good. Trying to go for the body slam again. De La Vega not wanting to let that happen. Schoolboy now. 
grabbing the scrubs, but no. Once again, John Strange able to power out, able to flip out. Now both men back to their feet, colliding. Got him! Was it enough? Yes! John Strange may be insane, but he knows one thing. That belt is going back with him to the asylum. And then the set. All losses here tonight. De La Vega could have expunged it all if he could have won the Proving Ground Championship from John Strange, but he wasn't able to get it done. And now, here's Delgado in the ring. Guess coming to check on De La Vega. Still hobbling on that leg, and John Strange extending his hand there in good sportsmanship. Rich Portiella now making his presence known, and De La Vega shaking his hand in a show of good sportsmanship. Good for De La Vega. It takes a big man to be the bigger man and raise the hand of a guy who just beat you, a guy who has a, that has a heavyweight title, and a guy who, who's not allowed to use silverware when he eats, when he beats you. Like, you got to be a big guy to sit there and say, okay, yeah, I lost. You're the better wrestler tonight. Rich Port has something to say here. Uh, the last few weeks, it's been uh, really difficult. It's been difficult, you know, like everybody knows, we lost Francisco Kiyotso. And uh, ever since then, it, it hasn't been the same. It hasn't been good for all of us. You, him, me, we've been on a losing streak. I understand that Frankie was the one that was keeping us going. Because of him, we made it this far. So you know what I think? This is the best time for us to just go our separate ways. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw it right there, the set going their separate ways. Guess, you know, they need to they need to just go reassess themselves, Dan. You hate to see any group break up, but maybe perhaps this is for the best at this point in time. You know, it might just be. You know, they, they lost their leader, unfortunately, and, you know, maybe it's just a good opportunity for them to kind of strike out on their own and find singles competition and, you know, try to go off and make their own way well ladies and gentlemen that's all the time for we that we have for you here at wwm proving ground for dan Lydon. i'm your ringside pitchman donnie harris jr we'll see you next time